Edward and his mother, Margaret of Anjou had fled to Scotland following their defeat at the Battle of Northampton, where in safety they would be able to rebuild the Lancastrian forces. Richard of York though would rebuild his army ready for an incursion by Margaret and Edward in the north of England. This would culminate into the Battle of Wakefield which would lead to the restoration of Henry to throne again and the death of Richard of York. At the battle, it was discovered that Edward was starting to make his own decisions, when he ordered the execution of two Yorkist knights loyal to the Earl of Warwick, who were assigned to protect Edward's father in the Yorkist army. As a child often being brought up with conflict, gave the indication the Edward was being brought up as cruel and aggressive person. Edward's mother, though would hesitate, unable to control her army and was forced to retreat rather than advance on London. Edward and Margaret would be caught by the Yorkist army led by Edward, Earl of March, at the Battle of Towton on 29 March 1461. The battle was the largest and most bloodiest thought on English soil, between 50,000 soldiers and at the end of the battle there would be between 9 to 13,000 dead. The battle was so fierce and deadly that the blood would turn the snow from the storm it was thought in red. Margaret and Edward would both survive the battle and flee to the safety of Scotland again. Edward's father was captured and taken to the Tower of London, and Edward, Earl of March would declare himself as King Edward IV. Edward would then travel into exile into France with his mother. Edward's fortune though would change, nine years later in 1470 at the age of 17. The Earl of Warwick sought to ally himself with Margaret after had fallen out of favor with Edward IV. Warwick plotted with Margaret to restore her husband to throne. Also, Louis XI of France wanted to seek Lancastrian helping him conquer Burgundy, who were Yorkist allies. As part of these deals Edward would become the godfather of Louis XI's son, Charles. And to ally himself with the Earl of Warwick, Edward would marry Neville's youngest daughter, Anne Neville. Warwick returned to England, and with the assistance of Edward IV's youngest brother, George, Duke of Clarence, he would retake the throne for Henry VI. Edward though would again dither and did not return to England with his mother until April of 1471. By this time Edward IV had regrouped and returned to England, reconciled with his younger brother, to retake the crown, defeating a Lancastrian army at the Battle of Barnet, where the Earl of Warwick was killed. Edward would lead the remnants of the Lancastrian army at the Battle of Tewkesbury in which he and his army was defeated by Edward IV on 4 May 1471. Despite many contradictions depicting that Edward may have been captured and executed by Edward IV, it seems that Edward died in the battle. His body would be buried in Tewkesbury Abbey. He would be survived by his wife, Anne Neville, who would eventually marry Edward IV's youngest brother, Richard, Duke of York who would become eventually Richard III. Later that month, his father, Henry VI would die, probably murdered on the orders of Edward IV in the Tower of London, and effectively ending the Lancastrian bloodline claim to the throne. Little can be noted of Edward's short life. As he was cut down at the age of 17 in the prime of his formative years, his true identity has not been recorded. The Yorkists has painted him as bloody thirsty and nasty and also lacking intelligence. For most of his life he would have spent be brought up by his mother, especially out of England, thus he would have not had the education and upbringing of a prince in the English Plantagenet court. The cruelest point of all, Edward was in fact killed by his own cousins, 